What's up everyone, this is Hernandez from Pier Productions, and we are finally out to do the long-awaited WISH AR torture test that uh, you guys have been wanting to see for a very long time. It took us a while to obviously get the ammo and uh, get everything coordinated, but we are out here today. It is October 31st, 2020, Halloween, so happy Halloween everybody. Um, I want to take a, a side step here for just a second and uh, say rest in peace to my boy Sean Connery. Passed away today, best James Bond ever. Um, so we want to uh, we want to start the test today. So what we're going to do, we're going to be doing a bunch of different things. Um, we're going to beat this thing as much as we can, um, testing every different aspect of it seeing if it can take the uh, stresses of a, uh, a defensive rifle that a defensive rifle should be able to take. Um, periodically throughout each test, we're going to stop. And behind me and the guys here, you can't see it right now, but there is a target out at uh, 25 yards that we're going to try and confirm zero on the sites that I mentioned to you guys in the previous update video. Um, these sites are uh, are from Wish. I think they're going to fail the test today, but uh, we'll see what happens. The first thing that I'm going to do today is we're going to film trying to check and see if the zero stayed from the last time I zeroed them. So we'll take a couple shots, see if the zero is confirmed. If it is, we'll proceed. If it's not, what we're going to do is move the target forward and. Uh, and we'll go from there. So really excited to get everything tested today. We're going to be smashing some pumpkins. We're going to be hitting this thing like using it as a hammer. We're going to be doing a whole bunch of stuff to it. So sit back, get you some popcorn and a drink, and uh, hope that you guys enjoy this. I just want to introduce a couple guys. I'm going to actually have them introduce themselves. We got in the Master Chief mask. Your name, sir? G2. G2. In the no mask. In the no mask. Joe Dirt. Joe Dirt. He's going to have a YouTube channel coming out here soon, which I will link to. Tactical guys, Appalachian. Tactical Appalachian, which uh, I'll link to you guys. Please subscribe to him when he uh, starts the channel. And Gravy Man. Gravy Man. So we're going to get this test kicked off and uh, let's do this thing. All right, we're going to go ahead and see if the uh, iron sights from Wish retain zero from the last time I was out here. Uh, not out here, but out at the range. Um, I'm going to go ahead and fire three rounds at the target at 25 yards, which will be on the picture in picture in the screen. You'll be able to see it now. Um, I got a fresh target out there, so let's see what we can. Uh, See what happens. Everyone got ears on? We'll go down and check after all rounds fired. Maybe we got a failure to feed. Could just be this mag. Could be that ammo too, because it's three manufacturer. There we go. Yeah, it was just a failure to feed. Not a wish problem, guys. And I did forget to put the brass catcher on here. I'm going to do that right after this. Okay, we're gonna walk up to the target now and see what it, where it hit. Okay, we're up here at the target. I'm looking at it, and I'll show you in a second. This actually makes sense 
because before I left the range the last time, I adjusted the rear sight a few clicks, hoping that it would move it from the left to the right, which it did, but it did it too much. So give me a second. That's what we got right there, which before I left the range, it was hitting about right here and I adjusted a few clicks, which is hit now hitting there. So I will adjust it back. I'm gonna call that okay for right now and we'll see what we get after a little bit more abuse. All right, guys, we're gonna start the first test here. This is gonna be a push-up test. Our tank <laughs> is gonna go ahead and uh, do some push-ups on here. What's, what that's gonna do, obviously, is gonna put a lot of stress on everything. So stress back here, stress up here. He's gonna do 10 push-ups. He's gonna then get up and just shoot at the dirt mound back here. We're gonna do three mag changes. Each mag has 10 rounds in each. I forgot to mention prior in the intro that we're using Freedom Munitions, 55 grain, full metal jacket, 223. Um, and that will also be going across the bottom of the screen on a ticker. So any information pertinent to this test will also be down in that ticker. Um, what the theory behind this was, we're also going to be, during the shooting portions of this, it's also going to be you know, testing the charging handle, the fake bad lever, um, the muzzle brake compensator, um, just to see if it can take the stress of like rapid reloads. Joey's going to be firing as fast as he can. Um, and then we're not going to be shooting at the target. We're going to reserve that target right now for just zeroing. Um, if he happens to get a malfunction because this Freedom Munitions ammo has been acting kind of funky on us today, that's just another opportunity for him to tap, rack, and as fast as he can, rack the charging handle. Again, the charging handle is from Wish. So we're going to go ahead and commence the test. If you want to go ahead and put your uh, earbuds in, he's going to do 10 push ups and then commence fire. This may be a little difficult. Open and last round. All right, let's take a look at things here. Bag out. Yes. Okay. All good. Got a little warm. All right, so something we just discovered because this is the first time any of us have shot with a brass catcher on is mag changes. Um, kind of difficult, but. Uh, Looked like a bit of an amateur, but no, nah, you're good. I'm gonna shake the rust off a little bit. Everything looks good so far. I'm a lefty, so it's a little weird. Yeah, we forgot to mention Joey's a lefty, and yeah. this is not set up for a lefty. I still shooter. was actuating the bad lever with my thumb on my right hand, though, so. And it, it seemed to work uh, perfectly. Nothing like the muzzle brake doesn't seem like it walked at all. I don't see any. Uh, I don't see any bend or any kind of movement in the handguard or the buffer tube. Which I didn't buy the buffer tube off wish. This is a this is a legitimate buffer tube. Um, all right. So what we're going to do now, we're going to do a quick confirm zero, see if just by doing that and the rapid firing there, if the uh, um, the iron sights got knocked off zero at all, and then we'll move on to the next test. All 
All right, we're gonna do the second uh, confirm zero here. I did adjust the, uh, the rear sight a few clicks. Um, it's probably back to where I had it before, but uh, we'll see. Three shots. Let's go look at it. All right, guys, it looks like we're still favoring right. Um, the three new ones, this guy, did you say this one, this one, and this one? This yeah, one? Or? This one, this one, and then the bottom one. Okay, so we got these right here. So I'm going to be honest with you guys. I have the rear sight on, on that rifle pegged almost all the way to the left as it is. All right, we'll see what we can do. And again, this could be me, but uh, we'll continue. I'm not ready to rule it out just yet. All right, guys, this is test number two. G2, pump tank, let those stop and smash it on that pumpkin. And we're gonna see what happens. Will it break? We don't know. Since it's Halloween, we decided to go pumpkins over watermelon. This guy's got a pretty thick shell, so we'll see what happens. Um, this is all. This is clearly going to put a lot of stress on the stock. Um, this stock, I, I mentioned it a couple videos ago. This stock is actually pretty good quality for being from Wish. Um, we'll see how the polymer holds up. It'll obviously put a little bit of stress on the rest of the parts just from the shock. I um, believe that is that's a mission first tactical clone replica of stock yeah. Yeah, of their, of their, of their minimalist, uh, minimalist stock, and, and excuse actually, me. Yeah, uh, minimal, minimal stock, yeah. Yes. Um, so he's going to do some, try to do some damage to that, or the pump is going to do some damage to the stock. We'll see. Either way, we'll be happy. Either way, we'll be happy, and it'll prove or disprove our theories. Um, after that, we're going to transition really quick into another shooting phase. G2 is going to gear up and shoot over here at the hill, and then we'll go back into another zero phase. So let's get started. G2, the floor is yours. Guys, I'm going to be honest with you. I, honest, I did not think that would happen. I thought that stock was going to shatter. I'm actually really impressed with that. <laughs> Definitely could hear the buffer spring in there. Like, hold on a second. I see no... I see no visible damage to the stock. None whatsoever. And I see a lot of visible damage to the pumpkin. <laughs> Look at the pumpkin. That's uh... he, he didn't make it. So, uh... I, dude, I'm so surprised. By I that. am very surprised. I mean, look, look how thick the shell is. Yeah, I mean, that's a I, thick I, pumpkin. I mean, it didn't even break on my first smash. Uh -uh. Okay, guys. Well... We're going to transition over to the shooting phase for G2, and we'll think of what to do next to uh, punish this thing. I, I thought that was going to do it in, and we were going to have to switch over to the other stock that I brought today, but this thing's surprising us. So, All right, guys. Well, I have to resend my statement just a little bit. Upon further review, there is some damage to the stock that we overlooked prior. 
as I was cleaning it off here, I noticed it. The sling loop right here, just that little plastic piece that would have let you thread a sling through, busted off. But the stock still functions, Cl clicks into everywhere it needs to. There is no other visible cracks that I can see in any of the seams or anything like that. So it gets some negative points for that, but we are going to leave it on the rifle and continue testing. Let's go ahead and unlatch it here. You can take the helmet off now. Good. It's so hard to see out of this thing. <laughs> All right. So far, so good. Let's do another zero confirmation. Okay. <laughs> Upon further review again, after that shooting phase, G2 said that he saw something fly off when he was shooting, and he was right. We looked at the rifle again, and look what fell off. We're missing one side of the charging handle. It is no longer an ambi charging handle. It's more of a standard extended charging handle. So we'll see how long that lasts. The pin was still there and the pin was in place. So I'm not sure what happened other than saying that this piece right here actually broke off. Um, the pin, like I said, the pin was in place. The spring is in there, but the spring looks damaged. Um, so there's some points off right there. I'm going to try and reconfirm zero and we're going to do the tomahawk next. All right, we're going to go ahead and do another uh, zero confirmation and see if we have any shift. Let's go see what we can see. All right. These were the shots that I just took, one, two, three. Right before the phase, I bumped it over thinking, I'm here, I'll move it over a click or two and see what happens. That's what that netted me. Now, I can throw a shot every now and again, but I'm not that bad of a shot. So one thing that we, know, we all noticed This sight actually does this, and it has a natural cant to the left. So I'm going to click one. I'm going to leave it right there. I clicked what I felt to be two clicks. To be fair, I might have clicked it 
twice and the site registered it as five or six clicks before. And uh, I'm gonna take, take it back and we're gonna fire one round and see if that made any difference. And if it didn't, then I'm gonna start to think that the, the elevation on this seems to be okay. I mean, we're getting this kind of variance, but at 25 yards, my Smith AR, it would be center punching this target every time. And that's wolf ammo. We're using freedom munitions. I'm beginning to believe there is something up with these sites. I'm not ready to make that determination yet, but let's fire one more round and see what happens. All right, I'm gonna take one shot. We're gonna run up there and see where it hit. half a click further to the right yeah so we're right here guys i did the what i felt to be two clicks right on that site and it moved it here again we're at 25 yards so i, I really don't know what to think at this point i'm going to continue testing but honestly we're just going back and forth through the same amount of clicks it should there should not be a variance like this but uh we'll see what happens at the end of this I'm thinking this next set of tests is going to put those iron sights to bed. So let's do it. Is it at 60? Yeah. All right, guys. We thought this test up. There is no practical purpose on this test, just other than the fact that it's going to be fun and it will honestly put all these parts to the test. In fact, it would put, probably put normal parts to the test, but I have a lot more faith in normal parts. We call this the tomahawk test, but can call it whatever you want. All of us are going to take a go at tossing this bad boy. I'm going to throw like a tomahawk. One of the guys is going to underhand it. Maybe we'll see a football pass. We're going to see a couple different things. And we're going to see if what all happens to these parts. At the end of this, I'm going to run up. Whoever throws it last, I will then run up, pick up the rifle, and commence in the shooting phase. And then we will uh, see if there's any more damage or see what the damage, we're not gonna check damage throughout unless there's a catastrophic, like if the stock comes off or you know, the buffer tube flies off or something strange like that. We're not gonna check any damage until after the shooting phase. So we're gonna get prepped and uh, let's go. All right. I'm gonna toss this thing to the best of my ability because my shoulders suck. But I'm gonna toss it like a tomahawk. And then someone else is gonna come up and toss it however they want to. So. Howdy. We have something to talk about. One, we forgot to put the brass catcher on, so we got random brass everywhere. Two, we've got some broken parts, kids. <laughs> I kind of figured this would happen. Our iron sights are shot, so there will be no more zeroing because, well, why bother? Um, I'll take that back. The rear slide still goes up and down, but it's really, really loose right now. The front sight. Oh, wait, wait, hold on. I lied. <laughs> it's alive. 
It's a lot. Just kidding. It kind of looks like it's somewhat cracked in there, but we'll see if it it held whatever version of zero it thinks is correct. Um, gosh. The, uh, a lot of sticks. The, um, the Strike Industries grip here didn't even budge. There's not even a scratch on it. However, we have noticed that the handguard has shifted. Um, now, I did Loctite all these screws, so I don't know if, if it has just shifted from what we're doing. I mean, it's obviously shifted from what we're doing. It's actually, I don't know if the camera can get it or not, but it's actually shifted off quite a bit. Yeah. Um, I don't necessarily think that was because we noticed it in the prior test. So I don't see any other noticeable damage. The uh, selector switch is good. It's still functioning. The one half of the charging handle is still functioning. The iron sight is that's all plugged up. We'll see if it hold, holds zero now. Um, I doubt it will. The extended push pins are fine. Anti-walk pins are fine. Sling plate's fine. Stock's still fine after all that. That's impressive. And this grip, though, it's the most uncomfortable grip ever, but it hasn't cracked or anything. All right, so let's go test zero, and well, we got another test that uh, we'll see if the handguard holds up to. Help if I actually seated the mag. That's very important, kids. Let's see what we got. There's nothing to look at. Those sights are toast. Um, it could very well be that it jarred the sights back into actual zero, and that's something we can test because right now the rear sight's pegged all the way to one end, um, and we can definitely try that out. But right now we're going to move on to the next test because it's going to be really cool. See you soon. All right, guys, we're going to put this handguard to the test because other than tossing it around, it really hasn't gotten any love today. So we're going to run it over. <laughs> Joey's going to hop in here, and I'm going to uh, lay it right there. Is that good? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So he's going to uh, run over it with the front and the rear tire, and then he's going to back up and do it again. And then we're going to go into another shooting phase. Let's see what happens. Just tell me if I need to turn the wheel or not. <laughs> You back over it? No, go both tires. Go.
Oh, we definitely have some bowling. <laughs> Look at this. Right here. It's not bad, but there is a slight bow. Just on this side, the other side looks fine. Oddly enough, you'd think it would have been the side that uh, was on the top. Yeah. But this is actually, there might have been a rock or something on the bottom there. I don't know. The, again, the grip, no damage at all. Um, other than the little bit of bend. Oh, yeah. That is still alarming, though, because the ground, it's been raining the past couple of days, and the ground is fairly soft, yeah. so. The ground is very soft, but this thing definitely took some. Wow. If you look at it from the top, from this angle, it looks a lot worse than looking at it from this angle. And it's definitely, it has definitely shifted even more. You know what? That probably accounted for why the sights were off, too. That's a good point. So, things we think of after the fact. So, knowing this information, we're not going to test the iron sights anymore today. Um, aside, you know, there's no reason to try and re-zero and re-zero and re-zero. Um, we will talk about the iron sights after we're done. But right now, we're going to go into one, a, another shooting phase and uh, see if there's any more damage that's sustained to the rifle. All right, good to go. Let her rip. The nuts uh, hanging off the side there doesn't make things easy. Take a look at her here. Guys, the reason he had the rear sight down, because I know someone's going to comment about it, <laughs> is because the rear sight doesn't work. And we're not aiming at anything. We're just shooting at the hill to get rounds out. So that's why the rear sight's down. Yeah, I mean, I mean, other than the handguard drift and it now has a dent in it, everything other than the iron sight seems to be holding up. The sling plate. Now it's all that junk. All right. Let's go back and we'll have a little talk. All right, guys, we are at the end of the Wish AR test. We've been at it for about three hours, two and a half, three hours. And uh, you've seen all that we've done. We feel that at this point we have done everything that would be fair to the rifle, fair to the parts. Anything more that we do would be just trying to break stuff, just to break stuff. Um, in all practicality was throwing the rifle like a tomahawk, really simulating anything, kind of. I mean, if you were in a scuffle and your rifle got knocked out of your hands and it went down a flight of steps, you know, that would possibly simulate something to that nature. This test was not scientific by any means. Please keep that in mind. I wanted to try, we all wanted to try to test these parts because all of us had the same theory in mind like these parts are being shipped from china they're not branded parts do these parts have the same quality assurance 
that you would get from something like Magpul or Troy or Midwest Industries, Daniel Defense, your big name hitters. And I think I can speak for all of us to say that overall, we're actually pretty impressed at the results we found today. That being said, would we choose parts from Wish over a branded part for our home defensive rifle? No, not necessarily. Um, let me clarify. So the only thing that I'm counting as a full failure today of what I bought are gonna be the iron sights and the charging handle. And the stock. well, the, the stock, they were telling me the stock, the stock is still functional. Um, however, you can't use a slide through sling on it. So that is a ding to the, sl to the stock. Um, well, let me, let me be clear, can you get closer? You still can. So this, this stock actually has several points for a sling. You have the point right here but you also have a point right here where you can mount a sling. So one of the retention points for a, st a sling broke off. There is no QD point, a QD mount on this stock, but neither there is not one on the actual MFT stock to my knowledge. So the stock gets a couple points off for actually a piece breaking off on it. However, the stock is fully functional and it, do it does still work. Sling plate, nothing broke on it. Uh, the sling buffer plate, nothing's broke on it, so it's good. Ambi selector switch, absolutely nothing happened with it. It is still fully functional. No scratches, no chips, not even any paint damage. It's good. The anti-walk uh, trigger pins, again, no damage, no scratches. They, they didn't even come loose. Um... The Ambi charging handle is no longer Ambi. Um, there doesn't look to be any internal... Actually, let's pop the rifle open and pull that out. Bolt to the side. Let's look at the bolt briefly to see if there's any... Nothing. The bolt's in perfect condition which is impressive. So I don't see, I don't see any other damage to the charging handle itself. It's not bent in any, any other place. We just lost the, the one uh, arm off of it. The other one that actually locks on the rifle is, is fine. So it didn't fail. We were still able to continue with the test, so it loses points for losing the ability to be um, ambidextrous. However, it is concerning that the fact that the pin was still completely in place, that pin did not leave, the actual metal, aluminum, whatever this is made out of, did fracture and break. So keep that in mind. Take that information however you will. Moving along, we'll put the bolt and everything back in in a moment. Um, the push pins, no damage whatsoever. They function fine. The magnet out of the gun. The bad lever, the copy bad lever, although it looks like it's wobbly, that's just the uh, the bolt release. The the pin, everything's secure. The, it didn't even walk out. The screw didn't even walk out. It's not moving. It still functions. I'm going to give it a pass. And we're moving up to the uh, upper portion of the rifle here. We get into the handguard. So the handguard did sustain some damage when we ran over it with the truck. That is concerning simply for the fact that I have seen other name brand handguards um, be ran over in similar tests with vehicles like this and sustain no damage, no bending, no caving in, nothing. So this one did slightly. Um, I do see a few chips and dings on it. Um, other than that, I'm not going to fail it, but I'm not going to pass it 100% either. 
If I had to grade it 75%, can we all agree to that? Yes. Yes. So this this is actually a pretty big name on Wish if you wanted to look it up. It's Ohunt is the, the brand name on Wish. They're relatively cheap. I think I paid $45 for this handguard. Um, it's still holding in there. If I were to loosen these screws and readjust it and tighten it back in, it would be fine. There's no damage to the barrel. There's no damage to the uh, gas block or gas tube. All that has been protected. So I can't knock it too hard. The grip, the hand stop, absolutely no damage. I thought for sure that this thing was gonna fly off during the first test, or at least during the smashing pumpkins phase. Didn't even move. There's not even, paint's not even scratched on it. I have to 100% pass this. Like, this is a copy of a Strike Industries one. Other than the fact of me saying support Strike Industries because they're one of my favorite brands, if you wanted to pick this up off Wish, I would have to say you're pretty safe in, set, in getting it. Like, I, honestly, I didn't even put any Loctite on these screws and it hasn't, it didn't budge. So, moving along, the comp. I have said it from the get-go, I actually love this comp. Um, I do see actually some, um, some of the paint is actually fading off of this. It's actually rubbing off as I'm just rubbing it like that. Whatever coating that they put on this is coming off and I could be under a heat because we did do a lot of sustained fire today. Um, I will tell you that under sustained fire, it works very well. It's, it's very loud, but it works very well. Um, I think I paid eight dollars for it, if that. So take that information however you will. I am 100% failing the iron sights though. I can't confirm that other iron sights off Wish are like this. I can tell you that I would not buy whatever the, if they look like this, don't buy them. There are copy Magpul Gen 3s or the Magpul Pro sights <clears throat> on there that I'm actually gonna pick up and put on this rifle next. And I'll test those out. I think you can get them for $18 on Wish if you shop around. I'll get them, throw them on there, and we'll see what happens. So, oh, and the grip, I'm sorry, the pistol grip. This thing I thought was gonna fall apart. It, it honestly feels like it'll, if you look at it wrong, it'll fall apart. Not a crack or anything on it. So there's that. And also the trigger guard, not a scratch or anything on it. It held up. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the bolt back on in here. Do any of you guys have anything else to add? Would you like to throw in your two cents? Yeah. I mean, I'm rather impressed with how well it did hold up. Um, I figured when we were chucking it across the field, I thought, there's going to be a lot of stuff that actually broke on there. Um, and to my surprise, um, not as much damage was sustained as I thought there would be. Um, other than that, like I said, I am pretty impressed. Uh, one thing I will say about this Mission First Tactical Minimalist Stock clone, um, it actually feels very similar to the actual stock... Um, I'm not sure what type of materials they use in making that, but I'm impressed with the quality of that stock. Everything else, like uh, they were saying, the grip and stuff like that, the bad lever, um, even though I'm a lefty, it's not very practical for me, um, was actuating completely fine when I was testing it. So, yeah. All right, guys. Well, I will say one more thing, I meant it, and I mentioned this in one of the update videos when this, this rifle was complete. I said after the testing, if it survived, there was going to be something special done to it. So that I will announce what that is now. This rifle did, I don't know what that was, but this rifle did, uh, it survived. So what I'm going to do to it. Actually, I take that back. I'm resending one statement. There is a QD point on this stock. It's right here. So you do have a QD option. 
right there. Um, I'm going to get this stock Cerakoted to be a Mandalorian Boba Fett paint job. You, uh, I've been looking at a couple different ones and uh, it survived well enough that I think it deserves a, uh, a nice paint job. It's going to get cleaned up when I go home. Probably won't get shot again until I put the Magpul Pro sights on it. But uh, So that's what I'm going to do to it. It deserves it. Um, and that's that. So thank you guys for being patient with us. It's This has taken a lot of planning, a lot of time waiting for getting parts on Wish. Um, or so for the ammo. <laughs> and for, for the ammo, thanks to thanks to Joey for, for getting this for us, especially during these times. Um, and uh, thanks, thanks to you, again to you guys for, for putting up with all the, the long periods in between videos. And uh, once once I get it painted, we'll do it, we'll bring it back out. And uh, who knows? I, I might get a. Uh, oh, you know what? We do have to bring this this gun back out. We have a night vision test to do. Oh yes. With a, with a pet cube. Yep. So that's going to be coming soon. So keep keep keeping your eyes open for that. It's a little preview. Um, thank you guys again. Um, any comments, please leave them below. Uh, message me here on YouTube, on Facebook, and uh, I'll try to message you guys back as quickly as possible. Respond to the comments as quickly as possible. God bless. Have a great day.